Um, my name is Peter Olkers. I'm the vice chair of the Needham Conservation Commission. I'd like to open the meeting of September 10th, 2020. Um, I do have a script to read. As a preliminary matter, uh, this is Peter Olkers, Conservation Commission Vice Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Artie. Here. Bill. Here. Steve. Here. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Debbie. Here. Clay. Here. And then I have speakers. It looks like uh, there are a number of people who aren't here yet. Um, I see uh, Brandon Lee. Here. Bill Piersack. Present. Hank isn't here yet. Uh, Richard Kirby. Present. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, Matt Donovan, not here yet. Clary, Henry Boyd, Karen Catrone Skinner. Uh, Henry Boyd, I'm here. Oh, Henry Boyd, you are here. Great. Uh, Karen Catrone. Karen, can you hear us? Yes, I can, I'm here. Awesome. And Samin? Yes, hi. All right, uh, so we're still missing a few people, but everyone here seems to be working, okay. All right, uh, good evening. This open meeting of the Town of Needham Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Needham Conservation Commission is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. The general public is allowed and encouraged to ask questions during the meeting when directed by the commission chair and through the use of the raise hand feature associated with the Zoom meeting app. Those that have questions or comments regarding a particular hearing will be called upon in the order that they raise their hand, so please be patient. All supporting materials have been provided to members of this body and are available on the Conservation Commission website. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. All right. Um, we are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each hearing on the agenda. I will introduce the applicant and or their consultant to begin the project presentation. After they conclude their presentation, I will go down the list of members inviting each by name to provide any comment or questions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and please state your name before speaking. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So that's, uh, the script, and so we can actually enter into our first um, order uh, piece of business. So we did have minutes. Did people have a chance to look at them, read them, comment? Relatively short, so I didn't see anything that was a problem. 
Okay, I'll take a motion. Motion to approve the minutes of, I'm sorry, I gotta get the date, of May, these are the ones, ones in May 28th? No. Yeah, May uh, those are the ones, yeah. Yeah, mo motion to approve the minutes of May 28th. Second. All right, all in favor, I'll go down. Artie? Aye. Bill? Aye. Steve? Aye. All right. Um, enforcements. Um, the only real update I have is 185 Brookside Road. They had given me a preliminary um, mitigation planting plan or more of a restoration plan for the area that they disturbed beyond the erosion controls. And I wasn't particularly happy with it. So I've asked them to give it another shot and they are gonna be coming in to amend their permit in order to implement the plan. Um, and I expect probably not the next meeting, probably the first meeting in October will end up with it. Very good, thank you. Yep. All right. So we have two hearings on the agenda and some other business, um, including a couple of certificate of compliances and an Eagle Scout project. Um, uh, does it make sense to take any particular one first? Uh, I might recommend just taking the Eagle Scout project. Um, I expect it to be a relatively short uh, discussion. Um, okay. That way we can kind of keep things moving. Very good. So, uh, Henry, are you ready? All right, so Henry Boyd will be presenting his Boy Scout, Eagle Scout project. All right, can everyone hear me well? Um, okay, so I'm uh, a Life Scout in True Point 85 Wellesley. Um, I am looking for approval to um, construct an ADA compliant picnic table and place it uh, in uh, a picnic site that I will be further establishing along the Needham Reservoir Trail. Um, Clay, if you want to bring up the site layout, please. Uh, so here's an overhead view of the site. Uh, it's, it's roughly 22 feet by 12 feet off of the side of the trail loop. Um, and I plan to be constructing a table that is uh, just under uh, five feet wide and eight feet in length, um, which will be placed uh, pretty much in the center of the area. Um, I will also be laying out gravel um, under the whole area to uh, match the trail and um, planting three or four winterberry holly bushes uh, to make the site more, um, more welcoming to any passerbys. Um, Clay, if you don't mind going to uh, one of the, yeah, perfect. Uh, so here's um, the drawing that I've made for the support structure of the bench. Um, to be ADA compliant, it has to be greater than 27 inches in height, uh, which this is, uh, it's gonna be 28 inches high, so that's compliant. There needs to be uh, at least nine inches of uh, toe box space and this has 11 and a half, um, again, compliant. Uh, and it needs to be at least 30 inches wide and this is 34. Um, so it meets all uh, ADA regulations in that sense. Um, Clay, if you could go to the next one, please. Um, another aspect of the uh, ADA regulation is that it has to be at least 19 inches in depth. Um, which again, I plan to do and either side of the table is 19 inches, um, thus providing two wheelchair accessible locations on the table. Um, and I think that's all the logistics. Here's, here's a photo of the location. You can see that there's already some gravel laid there, but we plan to add on to that and make it, um, uh, just make it a little better. We're also going to be clearing all of the um, small unestablished growth that has come up through the gravel already there. And 
and that's the full extent of the project. And um, Henry has been working with us. We lost many communication with Ed Olson, the Parks and Forestry Director. Um, this site is something that that um, we're interested in having reestablished. As you can see, it was initially established to be a picnic uh, picnic site, um, but a, a table was never established there. Um, talking with Ed, there's no concerns uh, as proposed um, for how the, the plantings or the um, addition of gravel may, uh, may affect the long-term impacts or maintenance of the, the trail. Um, so staff is definitely uh, in favor of this. Um, as Henry pointed out, we did also ask him to um, make it ADA compliant, at least by the um, Forest Services uh, guidelines, the same guidelines that we use for the trail. And that way we, we um, kind of match up with the same accessibility that the trail already was, was designed with. Very nice. Any commissioners have any questions? I, I got a couple of questions. One is um, on the structure of it, I see that it's mostly two by sixes, then, you know, just some two by fours as the cross members that the, that the benches are on. I mean, obviously you've looked into this and that's obviously you're saying it's strong enough, but is it, is it, is it worth putting two by fours or just making them all two by sixes? Um. You know, I'm not, I've looked into construction of tables a decent amount and looked at several different, um, you know, versions that I found online. And it seems like, um, it seems like there's no need to have them all two by sixes. I don't think having them two by fours will compromise any of the integrity of the table. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't believe that will be an issue whatsoever. Just the only other thing is, um, so this is, this is, you know, the same keystone or gravel to match the path. Um, what is clay or does anyone know, is there, should, is it worth putting landscape fabric down? Because I getting the impression that maybe the main path may have landscape fabric, but this area may not. Is it, Henry, have you looked into that or clay? Have you guys talked about that on this fall for some landscape fabric, you know, just dig it back down for some fabric kind of so that, so you don't have to worry about maintenance in the future with growth coming through? Um, Clay ha had not brought that idea up yet. I was unaware um, that that may be uh, useful. Um, uh, so I guess, Clay, do you, do you think that is something that we should be executing on? That's definitely something that, that's worth consideration, I think. Um, if you want to consider that within your proposal, maybe tomorrow making an amendment, um, taking a look at the cost of that. Uh, I do believe that um, this picnic area was established the same way that the trail was. However, the trail receives regular um, regular walking and, and traffic, whereas this, this site, people generally don't stray from the trail and it's not really at this point established as an area that people would otherwise step off. There's nothing of, of interest in that little cul-de-sac. So um I, I personally i'm not real concerned with uh with further growth in the area just because i believe it'll it'll be continued to be used well i mean I, I have a feeling the main path though might have been constructed perhaps differently than this offshoot because i'd be a little surprised that they didn't do something with some type of fabric underneath that to stop the growth where clearly in this section here that wasn't that wasn't done so well, we'll have to go over that with Ed because they are the ones that are maintain the trail. Okay. So, um, you know, we can run it by them and um, and contact the scout before he does the work, if that okay. seems something. Yeah, I think it's worth considering because it's, it's somewhere, you know, you know, Henry, you want to do this and you want it to be, you want to maintain the same look as long as possible with minimal intervention with anyone going down the line. And, but so obviously you talk to Ed, certainly I think it's worth consideration. All right. All I got. Any other, uh, any other thoughts? Is there any, is there any um, need for erosion control? I mean, if we start getting into putting fabric down and excavating at all, um, is there any plans for silt fences or anything? No, there's no plans for erosion control. Um, you know, while working with Clay, I was told that um, everything except the gravel was zero ground disturbance. And as long as I didn't do any major grading of the, uh, the area, 
there should be no concern of erosion. Okay, great project. Impressed, yeah. thank you. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, very nice. Looking forward to seeing that being done. I would also like to note that that in our discussions, um, what we're looking for from Henry wasn't so much a, a real um, extensive lane of traveling, but really just a, a top surface, just something to, to kind of add after he leaves the area. Very nice. Is this something we need official approval for, or is this? Uh... So this is something that is um, being proposed under the um, trail maintenance uh, negative determination. So. Um, Henry has provided that um, notification of activity form, um, so it, it will require a motion of approval under that um, that negative determination that we have, uh, and then that form will get signed by, by Janet. Okay, very good. So, can we have a motion? I have a motion to approve. Second. Okay, go down the line. Artie? Aye. Bill? Aye. Steve? Aye. Peter? Aye. Thanks, Henry. Approved. Great job. Thanks, Henry. Great Thank up. you very much. I really appreciate you guys having me here today. Thank you. We'll with you tomorrow, Henry. Thank you. All right. Um, what makes it sense to go next? Um, I think it, we might as well get the um, the certificate of compliance for eighty country way. All right, so who's way. here representing that? I'm here. It's Samina. Oh, and Karen is going to do training. Okay. Good evening. So we're here tonight requesting a certificate of compliance for uh, the tear down and rebuild of a house at 80 Country Way. Um, uh, there were plant plantings required as part of the certificate of compliance. We were before the, we were um, supposed to be before the commission at the last meeting, but the, um, some of the trees weren't worn in, so we, we've had the, those installed. The trees were actually, a lot of the trees, the plantings were installed on top of a wall that uh, ran along the uh, side of the property along the wetland side of the property. Um, so um, we've planted the eight required trees on the downside of the wetland side of the wall, but the applicant planted hundreds of trees and shrubs um, on the upland side of the wall, which is still within the buffer zone. The property looks beautiful. It's um, well stabilized. Um, <clears throat> the wall's up, we have markers on the wall, um, wetland boundary markers on the wall. Um, there is, there, I, there's an issue with the, which was stated in the uh, engineer's letter um, with the patio. There was a patio constructed on the um, upland side of the deck, which is pretty close to the 100 foot buffer. Um, other than that, we, we did everything um, as required under the order of conditions. There was a letter submitted um, with the request um, that explains all that we did. Right. So, so my understanding is there were some irregularities with this uh, and so you you talked about them but I'd like to know why the plants that were in the plan weren't ever planted. So I think there was some mis misunderstanding I wasn't in involved in that point um, with the developer engineer that because I was told that they that it was okay to put them on the wall. So, and after speaking with Debbie, that, that wasn't the case. So we did go back and plant eight additional trees that were required. So the required number of plantings are planted on the downside of the wall. But again, just wanted to emphasize they planted probably 50 trees along that wall. <clears throat> right, and, and, but now we're in a position where you can't get a, a complete, you have to get a We understand plant. that. I understand that. Um, so my the, understanding is that this one, this this house is due to be sold. Is that it right? Is. Mm -hmm. So it'll be up to the next homeowner to actually understand the the fact that they need to take care of these trees. So you have written in the order of conditions as part of the order of conditions to have this monitored for two years by a wetland specialist. So um, I guess if that's not done, you could 
write an enforcement order to the to the new owner. Right. Um, I guess the the issue of the patio is also curious because that adds impervious. Right. So I spoke. And that with, wasn't on the plan. Yeah, I spoke with um, the developer tonight, and he was under the he was under the understanding that the engineer was going to request a minor, minor modification for that, but that was not done. So. And is there any reason why that wasn't done? That seems like a. Uh, I mean, it's right. So. Um. It just seems sloppy overall that these things weren't adhered to. And now when, now at this date, when these things come before us, uh, uh, it's something else we have to take into account. Um, right, and I, I understand that again, I, 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 as I mentioned before, I wasn't involved with the project at that point, so. Um. Right. Deb, was there anything else that came up? Um, no, I mean the homeowner. If you wanted to ask her, or the, um, you know, she she's selling the property, you can ask her about the the patio and such. Um, but other than the deviations noted on the um, on the engineer certificate, I didn't find anything. the The property is is beautiful. Um, there are many many plantings. They are you know within mulch and landscaped areas. Um, and the reason for these two restoration areas were there was encroachment of lawn into the 25 foot buffer. So as part of the project, there were two areas that were open, um, that are supposed to go back to nature and they had proposed plantings in those. So at this point, the plantings were installed, I believe yesterday. So and they look healthy. They, they look like great plantings. Um, so I think they've covered what was required in the order. Um, as far as the patio, you know, it is within lawn area. I don't think additional vegetation was removed in order to put the patio in. Um, and I did speak with the owner um, regarding, you know, how that should have come back to us. So I just think there may have been too many cooks in the kitchen on this mm -hmm. and um, and things got missed. All right. Yeah, I mean, I just want to emphasize that, that mm -hmm. we are very serious about 25 and restoration within that buffer zone. Uh, and often our agreement uh, to approve certain plans hinges on those sorts of mitigations. Um, and so that's a serious misstep to not actually have completed that, but I'm glad that it's been taken care of, even though it's going to linger on for another two years. Um, any other committee uh, members, commission members have a thought? I do have one thing I want to add. Um, now that those plantings are in and no one's living there, they need to be watered um, or they will die. Mm -hmm. Right, so is that arranged, the yes. watering? Yes. Okay. Um, so that needs to be kept up and you need to let the new owners know to keep an eye on them when it's dry. That's all I can something. I'm so sorry, Debbie, you, you finish and, and then I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I think um, Peter, Peter will ask you if you have any comments, uh, maybe after the commission. Yeah, so Peter, um, as we've seen time and time again, um, you know, someone says, the builder says, oh, that person should have done it, or that person should have done it. And then the other person said, well, someone else should have applied. We've seen that time and time again, that excuse. Now, we're only, okay, we're only talking about patio. It was within, I guess, existing lawn, but it's impervious. It's within, it's, so it's an impervious patio within existing lawn. So would we have approved it? Well, perhaps we would have approved it, making sure that that, the impervious aspect is mitigated, um, but I, I, you know, we, we can't we can't just buy into the fact that the builder said, "Oh, the engin engineer was supposed to do it." The fact remains that it wasn't done, and it was added without permission. That's the, that's the only thing that matters. Period. Can you just speak to that for a second. Uh, uh, please. Uh, not, not like 
So, so that's, that's, what, that's what matters right now. In fact, how it came about and their end, they can, you know, any excuses can come about. So the fact remains, what do we do now? The fact that it's there, is, is there anything, is there anything else we would have done if they came, if they'd asked us before Peter? That's where the question lies. Is there anything we would have asked them of? And the reality is, I don't know. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I, I, I truly don't know. But we, we might've said to them, you know, make it out of, make, you know, if you're gonna put a patio in, make it, make it pervious. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's and probably what we would have said. Probably would have done that versus letting them do whatever they want to do. So, you know, this is, it's something to consider into consideration because builders are not stupid. They know very well that, you know, just beg for forgiveness afterwards. That's, that's how the saying goes. And so, um, but again, we don't know why it happened. All we know is it happened without permission. So Peter, we have to deal with it from that, from that context. Anything else doesn't matter right now. Thanks, so. Anyone else? You know, yeah, me, oftentimes when these, when these stormwater systems are designed, um, they're not designed down to the last uh, drop of water. Sometimes they're a little bit oversized. Maybe the stormwater system there can support a small increase and maybe the engineer should look at that. Uh, um, uh, the only other thing is, I, I think we've seen as built in the past that actually show the plantings that were required. Um, this one just seems to show the areas. Uh, can someone refresh um, my memory so whether, whether or not? So when they originally um, filed it with us, when the, the surveyor went out to do the as-built plan, there weren't any plantings in those restoration areas as they were supposed to be in the 25 foot. So that's why he didn't survey in the actual plantings in there. Um, so the plantings just went in yesterday. In, in, in those two locations. Especially where the property gets transferred to a new owner, it, it might be good to have some documentation that one, they were, it was done and where they were placed. Um, in the event, uh, you know, we, they monitor in the future and things are removed or altered. Um, just a suggestion. Do you want me to, to hold the, um, the certificate of compliance for a plan showing the planting locations? I don't know what the rest of the commission thinks. I thought I would just bring it up as a talking point. Yeah, I know that they are selling the property, so they are looking for a quick turnaround, but we could require a revision to the plan. Yeah, so I was gonna add that, uh, you know, I, I kind of side with Artie on this. I'm not really concerned about selling the property for a quick turnaround, and that's, you know, they had an opportunity to do it the right way to begin with. But I'm more concerned about like the, the new owners that are gonna take over, and is there any way we can delay the certificate of compliance until the new owners take occupancy and then they come before the board and ask for that certificate of compliance. And that way they're educated as to the issues that they have to deal with in their property. Uh, Cause we've had that problem over and over again. New, new owners come in and, and they're not aware of what they're getting into with wetlands. And uh, I, I don't know if it's beautiful into, to do that or not. Yeah, I mean, I just think Obviously, the lawyers involved in the closings and everything, the alarm bells go off when there's open permits. Um, but I was thinking of having, you know, some condition that in the future we can start adding that we need a sign off from the new owners um, that we can keep on record that they understand the conditions. Well, why why would we, we why would we be worried about the lawyers and uh, alarm bells going off? I think that's that's up to the seller. The seller can wait a year and get the certificate of compliance in a year if they if that's what they if they want the certificate of compliance at the sale. Otherwise, they just tell the sellers, "Hey, you have to get the certificate of compliance as part of what you have to do, and go before the commission." Um, what well, what's the big deal with that? I think it's worth discussing. Well, I, 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 you had mentioned, uh, Deb, you had mentioned in the future, we could ask for a sign off. Why, why does it, why does it have to be, for example, in the future since. since well, cause I thought it would be a condition of the order. Well, I mean, conditions have now changed. Could, could we supply you with a letter possibly from the new owners stating that they're aware of the um, conditions and of the order conditions? 
that's what we're we're looking for. Um, is, is, I mean, do you think that's a problem? Or? I don't know. I know that the new owners are planning to put a fence all over the backyard. So they are already going through the um, some engineer and uh, they want to go through conservation for the fence and for the pool. So they are going to be involved with conservation anyways. But one thing I want to say is that the, from the very beginning, from the very first day, we went through conservation. We complied with everything they asked us. We never tried to be uh, smart, like do the patio and say, oh, they're not going to find out. That, I mean, something like that, it's impossible. And when the builder says that um, the engineer, chain engineering told us that it's okay, we really thought it was okay. And when we knocked down that old house, we built a beautiful, big, three times as big house. And we planted thousands of dollars of trees and we developed that area that is much, much nicer than what it was before. It's better for Nida, it's for, better for the neighborhood. And even the tax that the town of Needham is getting is three times as much. So what I mean is that when it comes to, like we have complied with everything, everything and even more, more than what we were supposed to do. Now at this point, when the closing is two weeks away, this may greatly jeopardize the closing. And I, I personally, as a person, I mean, as a, like talking to you as like person to person, I think it's not fair because we've done more than what was asked from us. And you should see how beautiful that lot looks that no other house in Needham has that landscaping. That should count towards something, I think. But as far as the new owners, the new owners are applying for a pool, they're applying for fence, and they know that we are gonna get partial um, certificate of compliance, it's gonna be partial, it's not gonna be like 100%. They know, and they're gonna take, take it from there. But what I mean that I want from you guys is just, compared to what has been done and what improvements to town of Needham to that neighborhood, that street was done, you can just say that patio wasn't intentional, wasn't like being smart, playing smart. It was just something that we thought we are far from um, the um, buffer zone and it's a small patio and all around it are trees and shrubs and the like, plantings. So right. I think we've done a lot. That should count towards something. Thank you. Um, so how are we feeling about this right now? Um, grant a partial, but require a condition um, that, that they be notified either by a revised plan or uh, by some letter that, that identifies the trees that need to be um, preserved? Well, the new owner also needs to know that they need to hire someone to monitor for the next two years. Right. And keep so, them alive in the meantime. Yeah. You know, that's important. Stephen's idea and Debbie started it <laughs> with the uh, some type of note, some type of some type of way that we actually know that the new homeowners actually have an idea what's going on. Because without that, there's no way. We, we, we don't know anything. We don't know anything about what they know, anything about their understanding. And, and the reality is they may, they may not understand as well. Um, this, gives them, this gives them understanding without, and it's a fairly simple thing. Here's what, here's, here's, here's what you're expected to do. And it's as simple as pretty as it's as simple as that. It really is as simple as that. All right. Does that, I don't see does that sound reasonable? So uh, a, a letter uh, 
to the new homeowners specifying what needs to be done as, as a condition um, as part of our approval of, of um, this uh, certificate of compliance? Or would it, would it be a, uh, would it be a letter back from them coupled with the condition, coupled with the planting conditions or the, uh, you know, to them coupled together to make sure that we know they're actually seeing what we're talking about? And well, I mean, I can, I can draft a letter that shows the conditions that they're on the hook for and have an area for them to sign at the bottom. Okay. And then we get that returned. And I think Bill had a great idea. I mean, I think we should at least have an, a, a real as built that shows the plantings and what the existing conditions are, right? So I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for the, them to put us, get a survey back out there and serve and get us a real as built survey. Okay, so that's the only um, problem you saw with the as built was just yeah. those plantings. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry because I'm not familiar with the language of the like conservation, like the words you use. I mean, as, um, built, as built, for example? No, I know, no, like, um, I know as built. And I, we thought that already did it already. But what's going to happen with the patio? Well, I think we're, I mean, the bill, the question to you. Um, you had talked about the stormwater. Um, you t t talk a little bit more about that as far as how it's related to the patio. And he's usually, usually I think of storm, I usually I think of the, the roof runoff hitting the gutters and going to the cult, you know, Delta and later. Go into those and tell me again what, what you're thinking, what might have happened related to the uh, anything else in stormwater. You're on mute, you're on mute, Bill. Um, those systems are usually designed based on impervious surface, whether it's it's roof, driveway, they look at it in its totality. But when you design those systems, sometimes those Caltex, the way this, or, or some of those uh, subsurface drainage systems are designed, you can't design it down to the exact um, impervious standard. So you actually throw in a little more stone or something. So as is, the way it's as built, might, might just be suitable to accommodate mitigating the impervious surface that was added. It, do, it doesn't look like the surface was a lot. It just seems as if um, a little bit was added. And I think the system may be able to accommodate it. So I would, yeah. before we, we, we ask for big mitigation measures, I think they should just look to see whether or not the system that they are is going to accommodate uh, what was put in. I, yeah, I, that makes sense. A simple calculation could figure that out. I, I think so. I mean, the problem is if it's not, let's say uh, it was designed right to the stand, it can't accommodate anything. That, so that's probably a bigger problem. Um, okay. and, and in the initial application, those would have been calculated out. We would have been able to see that. Uh, Correct. Change them if it needed to be changed. Well, well let's hope there's some, let's hope there's room and it doesn't create an issue. I can't imagine this, like you said, it's not a very big patio. Let's hope, let's hope it's, it's okay. And, there are probably some other ways that are that you could do um, that are pretty low costs that you could get infiltration um, without having to add on to subsurface systems. So, yeah. so who is this going to be on? Is this going to be on the current owner or on the person buying the property? Well, it sounds like they're doing. Uh, they have plans for some. Uh, impervious surfaces of their own. So it looks like we might have to be thinking about storm, uh, the sort of runoff in the future too. So I hear yeah, I have heard that they're coming before us for a pool at some point. Right, so, uh, so that's just part of the calculation. I mean, I can make that part of this letter that they understand um, when they come back before us for any work that that will need to be um, addressed at that point. You want me to do that? Makes sense to me. Well, what do you think? That's fun. Okay. Fine. Okay. So, Simon, um, are you going to be okay with me drafting 
what needs to be done to be signed off by the new owner? Um, depending on how how much work they're supposed to. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna accept like working everything. I, I don't know. They, they agreed that we don't do the fence. They are gonna do the fence and get the permits and everything. They're gonna do the court. But as far as the patio, I don't know. We have to put it in a contract or something. I don't know. We have already signed the PMS, so we cannot add some. I really don't know. I think what we're asking is for your engineer, Cheney, to redo some calculations, including the pervious area that is the patio, which was excluded in the previous calculation, and to see if that meets the standards that we've set forth. So, uh, Correct, Bill? We do it. The seller will do it. Was it just an addition to the patio or was the patio in its entirety? No, it was the deck coming down and then a small area right under, like at the bottom of the steps. It was a patio. There wasn't a patio there before. No, it was just a lawn. It was grass. Right. And there's a small retaining wall holding up side of the patio. What do you think, Bill? Um, I'm just only concerned about, uh, I think the seller, I think buyer is going to be very reluctant to assume these responsibilities. Um, I would. So um, I, I think some of these things should be done before the house is sold. I think we yeah. should be getting cal calculations on the stormwater. Um, we should be getting uh, plan, uh, an as-built plan showing the plantings. I think at minimum, those should be done before the house is sold. And uh, how long would it take? Because the closing is on the 29th. I mean, we, can, we can condition that uh, the partial is issued based upon the submission of those documents. Yeah. I mean, we can, I mean, obviously, we can issue the partial and instead of just having the remaining work being the two years monitoring, then we can include the other, the other things that we want so as part of that. But it sounds like we're also saying, you know, if people, you know, if the engineer works quickly, we're also, it also sounds like we have another meeting before the closing. Is that true? We have a meeting. 24th. Yeah, we have a meeting two weeks from tonight and the closing is the 29th. So technically, there's, a, there, there's an opportunity there to, to reconcile. That's what's okay. going on. Today is the 10th. It's going to be the 25th, 24th? 24th. Okay. So hopefully by then, it's going to be all, all set. Okay. But um, I... Is, Deb, I think to make sure it's understood what's needed for that meeting. And that is the as-built plan and the engineer saying that what has occurred, the patio addition, the stormwater, it is not going to have a negative impact on the stormwater calculations. Okay. okay. I can do that. Um, and you want the locations of the plants on the aspect. Okay. Um, I think the required the required plants, not all the ones that they they added. I just right. The ones in the in the restoration yep. area in the twenty five yep. foot. Yep. Mhm. Mm okay. But we're still okay. going. We're still going to need a letter that, in this case, as long as these other two items are taken care of. That letter would just be talking about the two year monitoring. The monitoring. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Karen, can you help um help her put all this together? You're on mute, Karen. I can absolutely do, I can do that. We we'll get this together and get everything in. When is what's the date you need it by? Um so we would need, if possible, a week from from today. Okay. We'll have that okay. for you. Okay. All right. And I'll draft I'll draft a letter that I'll send to you for the new owner. Okay, so I, I you're gonna include the monitoring in that letter? 
Yeah, as long as the other things are done, that'll all be all that's in there. Okay. Will be the two year monitoring. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Okay, thank Thanks. you very much, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. What, what do you th should, what hmm. makes sense to go next? Um, I'm guessing Keolis will be fast. Okay. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the hearing for Keolis right away vegetation management plan, request for re uh, determination of applicability, uh, representing Clary, uh, are you are you the only one representing Kill List for this? Uh, no, uh, Matt Donovan is going to be doing the presentation, and I will be available for questions. Thank Do you, you want me to say my name for the record? Yes, please. <laughs> My name is Clary Kucha. I'm Director of Environmental Compliance for Keolis and Matt Donovan from FBC uh, will be doing the presentation for the request for determination of applicability of the BMP maps. In Thank your you. Jurisdiction. Thank Matt? you. Hey everyone, this is Matt Donovan. Um, if I could start by sharing my screen, do you guys allow that? Yep, it looks like I can. Um, so I think you can see that now. I just wanted to point out that we do have a vegetation management website for Keolis Railroad. Um, on this website is the five-year vegetation management plan, as well as the annual yearly operational plans. And um, as you can see here, there's all the towns that the railroad runs through in Massachusetts that you can choose from. And I have, I have yours pulled up here. Um, so these are the maps that I submitted to you. But that's just a handy tool if you, it's constantly updated and easy to navigate website if you ever wanna stay updated on any of the um, vegetation management activities throughout time. Um, the website is included in the packet and um, we do still send you no notifications via certified mail as it is a requirement um, as part of the regulations. But this, um, for some people this is easier and um, everything is included here. So I can start. Um, the RDA was submitted to your commission as required by CMR 11, as well as specific sections of CMR 10, which require us to submit the delineated maps to confirm that the boundaries of the resource areas are accurate. The requirements are part of a five-year vegetation management plan, which is a plan designed to manage and control the vegetation necessary to keep the railroad and the public safe. As the plan is executed, great measures are taken to keep the sensitive areas protected. The sensitive area restrictions are listed and described in detail in CMR 11.04, as well as section eight of the vegetation management plan. The plan is regulated on all levels from federal to state to municipal. And as part of the five-year plan, your commission, the board of health, the board of selectmen and the department of agricultural resources are supplied annually with a yearly operational plan which is always consistent with the vegetation management plan and goes into more detail on the vegetation management activities for each year throughout the five year plan. And this you should have received via certified mail at the beginning of the year as you will continue to do so. Um, the vegetation management plan includes an integrated vegetation management approach where chemical application as well as physical and mechanical methods are used to combat the vegetation Best management practices are used throughout the plan in an effort to limit the chemical application, which has been a objective of Keolis. The maps that we provide you with that you see on the screen were made with USG or mainly for the chemical portion of the plan. Um, they were made with USGS and MassGIS layers to determine the boundaries of the sensitive and protected areas. And we do um, also get a list of all private wells that are adjacent to the railroad from the Department of Agricultural Resources. The maps don't often change. Um, they rarely change and we do, we do update them as necessary and make the necessary changes, but I can confirm that since 
the last time your commission um, confirmed these maps, there has been no changes made in this section. As you can see, there are areas that are depicted as limited spray zones and no spray zones based on the blue and the yellow colors. And um, in the field, the railroad tracks are marked with the same color coded system as shown on these maps and the markings in the field correspond to the same location as the maps. As the spray truck performs the application and the um, just I should mention that the applicator in the spray drug is licensed and certified to do to perform this work by the state of Massachusetts. Um, they will be accompanied by an environmental monitor who is a direct employee of Keolis's environmental team. Um, and they will be in the truck with them, instructing them and as necessary, and they will be equipped with these plans at all times. Um, most importantly, the yellow zones, which you only have one very small yellow zone um, in the very bottom corner, that will never be sprayed um, other than on the track structure itself, which is federally required to keep free of vegetation. As far as the blue zones go, this is where the environmental monitor has a plan going into the application. And um, these blue zones are really only sprayed on an as needed basis. Um, the conditions really need to call for um, application in these zones. Um, they will never be sprayed more than the interval, whether it's one or two years, depending on what color blue it is. Um, and outside of the track structure itself, more of an effort is taken into controlling the vegetation by physical and mechanical methods in these zones. Um, the chemicals that are used by the applicator um, are all are all on the state's Department of Agricultural Resources approved sensitive area material list. And that can be found on um, their website as well as our vegetation management plan. Um, and I think that details the process um, for the most part. If you guys have any questions, um, I can open it up to you. Thank you. Um, so, so you talked to, so this is, I mean, the way you're talking about this is mostly the spray component of, of this process, but there's also a vegetarian vegetation clearing, cutting uh, uh, process too, is there not? Yes, there is, Claire. I think you're muted. You're trying. Do you want me to take this, Matt? Yeah, can, can I ask, so when people are doing the, the cutting, in the right of way, if there there's an environmental monitor uh, along with them as well. Uh, yes, actually, is um, certified arborist um, who would identify first using the NCA three hundred. Um, when our mechanical our track department does the vegetation clearing, uh, they usually use hand tools. Um, the high rail equipment is usually done by a third party. As you, as you are aware, because they came through Needham um, last year. Um, this is a very specific question with Cutler, um, and it has to do with right-of-ways. Um, do you happen to know if there's overlap between the Eversource right-of-way and the Keolis right-of-way? Um, I believe near the Hersey line, there might be some overlap. Um, but the regulatory references that we need to oblige to uh, under the FRA are very different from the utility regulations and the Department of Public Utilities, the State Public Utilities, and the VMP. It's very different, the railroad from utilities as it relates to uh, vegetation management because they don't have to be concerned with passengers and we do. Yeah, I, so so my only concern about that is there's a patch of vegetation that may be overlapping a little bit with the Keolis right of way uh, that was restoration done for us by Eversource. Is so it near Hersey? No, it's actually, um, it's in Cutler Park 
Uh, right oh, on I know where you mean. I know where you mean. Yeah. That the trail goes behind the, yes. Um, is your question, do we do we do anything? I just don't want it mowed by accident. <laughs> uh, well, I really don't know what area um, you're referencing. They shouldn't have done anything within our right of way. Um, so I wouldn't need to go out there and, and see what the property line is, but I know where you're talking about. Okay. Um, it's beyond the boardwalk trail. Yeah, and I think that they, the, in doing the restoration, they deliberately chose species of trees that would not grow large enough to pose a hazard. Um, so if you have an arborist out there, they'd be able to determine that, I'm sure. I, I think it's around where um, Key 10 is touching the tracks in the yellow area. It's, I think it's, isn't it somewhere around there, Peter? Yeah, it's right before the highway. It's right before um, the the trail, the, the Blue Heron Trail uh, hits the highway. But anyway, it's a fairly obvious area of restoration. Um, but that area has been cut down before and Eversource claims it wasn't them. So I have to imagine it was Keolis um, or or the firm that came before you. Um, so it's just something we're concerned about. Um, I have to say my apologies um, because you broke off like probably two minutes into your talk and I did not hear you. I, I think I'm having difficulties with my internet so i have to move um but um let me see if i can get a better location can you hear me now yes oh good i have no idea what happened <laughs> um yeah. we can investigate that i i i all honesty i know the area you're talking about i don't recall anybody informing me of it um, and track department nor BNB have informed me of anything of the sort. So I would be interested in going out there and taking a look at it. Yeah, it's, it's very possible. It's just within, that's a place where the, the, the power lines and the track, uh, diverge a little bit. So it's possible. It's all within there right away. It's irrelevant, okay. but, but it's just something to watch out for. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments from commissioners? Just, just a quick question. Um, any additional protections within the zone two in the heights? Do they uh, look more towards mechanical than herbicide or? So the objective of course, under the uh, generic environmental impact report back, uh, I don't know, um, turn of the century, I guess, the objective of, a, of an integrated pest management or integrated vegetation management plan is to, over time, reduce the application of chemicals and use alternative methods. The uniqueness of the railroad is um, that unlike highway utilities, um, we have to spray the roadbed. There is absolutely no way around that. There are no other alternatives for vegetation along the track itself. Um, but that does not require us, and simply because the blue line says we can spray here every year or the double blue says we can spray every other year, our objective has been let's reduce as much as possible the spray. So we don't spray unless it's necessary. I am of the opinion that if we don't need to spray, we, we will not spray and or if we can actually um, control the vegetation via mechanical means, that will be um, what I would prioritize rather than having to put chemicals on the ground. Um, that being said, it doesn't mean that we're just gonna go uh, and cut everything without having any uh, sensibility to uh, the environment. Uh, so there are best management practices being followed and I encourage you to read the vegetation management plan 
that is listed um, in the uh, application, in the website within the application. Um, and also there is a public hearing tomorrow uh, from DAR at 11. So you have the EMN available as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other thoughts? Um, I just have a question in the areas that are um, priority or estimated habitat. Is there any special consideration in those areas? Um, I see that we have around milepost 10. Again, if, if, the, if the conditions uh, allow for drift or if there are wet conditions, if it's raining, uh, if the temperature um, I think is lower than, I don't know, uh, 60 degrees or there are very specific requirements that the certified applicator needs to follow in order for them not to lose their license, but also <laughs> to follow the regulatory requirements for how it needs to be done. Um, and one of the things the environmental monitor is tasked to do is that when they approach this area, they know uh, that around milepost 10, there are uh, resource areas that need to be protected. If it's wet, if it's windy, if there are signs that um, allow for the environmental monitor to understand that uh, the area is wet, it's a wetland, they will not spray that area. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, so it's reviewed by Natural Heritage? Every year, correct. Every okay. year the maps will be reviewed by Natural Heritage, correct. And they sign off on the maps because things change within um, NHESP and they, they review the maps at the beginning of the year. And they kind um, of set the standard for the treatments in their areas. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. They will okay. inform us if there's a change in habitat and or species within your jurisdiction that require X, Y, Z. Um, but they, they don't necessarily um, will inform us of any change in chemicals. They need to go through the board at the state level to okay. be able to do that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, very good. So, so this is a request for a determination of applicability. Um, and there were two specific things that they were requesting. Um, um, I think there's just one. Okay. So they're requesting a determination that the boundaries of the resource areas depicted on the plan um, are accurately delineated. Um, so as I mentioned, um, I wasn't actually able to physically go out there to look at the um, at the delineation um, due to them having to stop train traffic and everything for that to happen. Um, and apparently the, um, the boundaries haven't changed since um, they last came before us five years ago. So um, so you would be issuing a, a negative determination. All right. Ready to vote? We'll, or take a motion? A move. move that we close the hearing? That's Sorry. right. Thank Sorry. you. Uh, so, uh, Artie? Aye. Steve? Aye. Bill? Aye. Peter, aye. So meet, the hearing is closed. Should we go right to a vote? Any more discussion? I move that we issue a negative determination. Second. Artie? Aye. Steve? Aye. Bill? Aye. Peter? Aye. Very good. So we have uh, the negative determination of applicability. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Okay. Who shall we mail this out to? Um, Matt, please. Yes. Matt? That, yes. Thank you. Address that was um, on the form. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have two big ones left. We have a hearing for Heather Lane 
and the certificate of compliance for Sunita Williams. Hmm. Honestly, I think Sunita Williams will probably go quicker because all the commission members have had a chance to walk the, the site. Very good. So this is a certificate of compliance, request for certificate of compliance for 585 Central Ave, Sunita Williams School, DEP file number 234787. Um, who is here representing? Uh, Hank is there. Richard is there. Very good. Um, Just, I'm sorry, Peter, De De Deb, you know I'm unable to vote on this. Does that affect the quorum? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure some politicians said we could vote twice, so. <laughs> um, yes, it, it does, unfortunately. So, um, When is your I, next hearing date? Our next hearing date is on the 24th. <coughs> Not much we can do, Hank. Okay. Um, are there any questions while we're here? <laughs> so I'm sorry, two of them, um, Janet we knew wasn't gonna be here but two of the other members I just heard from late today. And um, so we still had a quorum, so we still had the meeting and uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't remember that Steve couldn't vote on this. Um, Was there anything in particular that we should be prepared to address at the September 24th hearing without um, deliberating? I know all the members walked the, the site. I don't know if anything, um, if they had any questions on it. No? No. Okay. So it looks like it'll be smooth sailing on the 24th. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I was getting nervous when you said it was going to be one of the long ones. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Could, could we perhaps request to go early on the agenda on the 24th? Of course. That seems reasonable. That would be fantastic. That would be Thank great. You your patience. I apologize. The things I thought were going to go quickly did not go quickly. So I apologize for that. OK. OK. We'll see you on the 24th. All right. Sorry. No problem, Deb. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. OK. All right. Well, I guess we have one thing left. Um, this is a notice of intent for 764, 766, 768A, 768B, Chestnut Street, otherwise known Heather Lane, DEP file number 234849. Um, Brandon Lean is here and Bill is the, Piersek is the applicant. Here. All right, so this is a notice of intent. Um, who will be leading our discussion? I will. Okay, Brandon, uh, please take it away. Um, may I uh, share my screen? Good evening, my name is Brandon Lee from Kelly and Jan Group. I'm here with uh, Bill Piersiak, the owner and applicant. We're here before you to request uh, the filing of notes and intent for the Heather Lane subdivision. The site is loca located on 764 Chestnut Street, right here, Sorry. Uh, as well as 766 and 768 Chestnut Street. Um, Kobe Kempel, uh, 766 Chestnut Street, LLC owns 766, and Mr. Piersiak owns 764 and 768. 
Just well, one question as far as the abutter notification and receipts. Did you mail those out or? I did, and I've emailed them to Clay. Okay, thank yeah, you. I did receive those, yes. Okay, just checking. Thank you. So we have um, Chestnut Street um, to the west. South Street is to the north, um, as well as Charles River um, and the town line to the south. The property is approximately 26.9 acres. Access to the existing lots are via uh, existing 15 foot wide driveway easement. The proposed project entails a six lot subdivision uh, within a 40 foot wide right away uh, roadway, Heather Lane. Um, Heather Lane is a 20 foot wide um, road with a cul-de-sac at the back. Um, lot four of the subdivision will be a residential compound. Um, also a definitive subdivision was filed for this lot. Um, this is a five lot residential compound. Um, this driveway is called Heather Lane Extension, shown in the dash green. The proposed project um, entails Heather Lane, which will consist of a 20 foot wide road with associated utilities, water, sewer, gas, and a new stormwater management system. The stormwater management system will comply with Mass DEP stormwater management standards. Uh, it will consist of deep sump catch basins, um, a, wet, a wet basin, and a recharge basin designed to treat um, all the runoff from the roadway, as well as uh, reduce peak runoffs and provide recharge. Resource areas on the property consist of an isolated wetlands to the north of the road. Um, this isolated wetland was delineated by GLM engineering consultants. There are also boarding wetlands shown in the purple line to the east and south of the property, as well as um, Charles River to the south of the property and its uh, associated 200 foot riverfront shown in the blue line. We also have bordering land subject to flooding that's shown in the dashed red line. This is the Needham um, base flood elevation of 98. We've also shown the zone X 500 year floodplain line also in the red dashed line. Um, the proposed stormwater management basin will occur outside all resource areas, um, outside the 200 foot riverfront, as well as floodplain and buffers to wetlands. The only work um, associated with within the buffer zone is the Heather Lane roadway. So here we have the isolated wetland shown in purple, uh, the 25 foot um, no disturb, 50 foot, and the 100 foot buffer zone. The closest work within the isolated wetlands will be 52 feet from the wetlands. No work will occur within the 25 foot no disturb. Um, the resource areas will, protect, will be protected with an erosion control line shown in the orange. So it will consist of a, a silt sock and all catch basins will have silt sacks. Uh, there will also, there's an existing stone wall along the existing driveway. Uh, that stone wall will be uh, reconstructed. Um, a portion of that stone wall will be within the buffer zone. Uh, we've submitted the definitive subdivision plans with the planning board and has been approved. The stormwater management system has also been uh, reviewed by DPW.
We've also agreed to provide a conservation restriction um, along the rear of lots three, four, and five of the residential compound. The conservation restriction shown in the hatching um, follows the 200 foot riverfront. Um, this proposal is for the Heather Lane subdivision. Um, Um, the individual house lots will um, file their own notes of intents um, for any impacts to resource areas. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, so there's a few things. Um, there's an isolated wetland, that's the resource area associated with Heather Lane. Um, um, how do you know that's not a vernal pool? It was um, reviewed by the wetland scientists. Was it reviewed in the spring? Because we don't have any information on that. Um, he has refreshed the, the wetlands, um, I think it's noted in the, the note in his report. Um, we were also told that um, GLM, GLM engineering consultants who flagged the line um, that they submitted an application with the commission and they've reviewed the line as isolated wetlands. No, they haven't submitted um, yet. There, it was an enforcement activity on um, Kobe Kemple's property. Um, so the line hasn't hasn't been approved at this point. So there's the write up. I'm sorry, Peter. Do you mind if I just ask a couple of things? Please. Okay. Um, so the write up talks about a um, potential vernal pool from the NHESP mapping. Now, yes. where is that? Yeah, that's um, to the south of the property uh, where my cursor is. Uh, we're more than 100 feet outside of that potential vernal pool. So um, located within this wetlands area. Okay, so that will, when the person goes to build that lot, that will be their, their deal at that point? Yes. Okay, and you will disclose that to them, I'm sure. Um, so the only other isolated wetland in this area is the one that you're um, describing at the beginning of the roadway? Yes. Hey, Deb, can I borrow that? For lot two. Are we saying there's that enforcement order has, he's never taken care of that enforce, enforcement order? I mean, because we, we were gonna require some replanting of some trees. Then he was saying, well, is it really a wetland? And we were saying, yes, it's really a wetland. And he was, he was trying to argue against that because then that would help his cause. So that, that's mm -hmm. what we're talking about here, correct? Deb? Yes, we, we haven't got the filing from GLM. Um, I did meet with Joyce out there and we did determine that that is an isolated wetland um, that they're referring to here and that the wetland on the other side of his house is bordering. So they're supposed to come to us with a tree replacement plan um, to cover at least the ones that he took down um, associated with the bordering vegetated wetland. Um, but since the other one has been determined to be isolated, it doesn't have a buffer zone. Um, and as long as it's not a vernal pool, then um, he does not have to replace those trees. Right, but you're saying there's a possibility that's a vernal pool? Is that, is that what you're, you brought up towards the beginning of this? Well, I don't, I mean, it was, you, vernal pools really need to be examined, obviously, in the spring to see if they're, they're holding the water and that the um, obligate species are using it. So that was, 
that was essentially my question was if this was examined at that time because we obviously don't have um, any information on that. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you have any more questions, Deb? Um, I have a few, but do you wanna go through the commissions first or do you want me to finish mine? Well, I'll let the commissioners uh, ask their questions. Anyone? I, I have a quick question. The, the, um, I, I guess the, the <clears throat> stormwater, the stormwater feature that is uh, south of the roadway is that a retention pond or a detention pond? It has a uh, wet basin as well as a recharge basin. So the wet basin is there for a treatment, has a one inch water quality volume. Um, and then the recharge pond um, is also designed to provide a dedicated recharge volume. And so was, both the entire basin will also detain um, up to the 100 year stormwater. Okay, so it's designed to retain the 100 year stormwater event and it's not anticipated that any water will overflow that feature in run down the, the slope into the river? No, there is a um, outlet to the pond um, that's designed to match the existing um, peak flows, to, to reduce the existing peak flows. So there, there is an outlet of that, of that facility? Yes. And, and where, I, 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 it's, it's hard to tell from the aerial, aerial photograph, is, is there gonna be some kind of stream that, that, that drains it down to the river? So um, it's going to flow overland over the over the the grass and the woodland into the river. Yes, uh, there, there's a flare end section with whipwrap. Yep. So it has an outlet control structure that will match the peak flows, and then overflows um, to the flare end section and whipwrap. The whipwrap um, is designed to slow down the the water flowing out of the basin. So, but there's no, there's no channel or stream there now that leads to the river. So what you're saying is there's going to be a flow coming out of there that will somehow make its own way to the river by ultimately eroding the natural floor of the woodland, right? Eventually we get a big couple of big storms in a row and there's gonna be water coming out of that flared end section and just washing down the grassy area of the upland, correct? Just sheet flowing over the... Right, I mean, all stormwater management systems have an outlet to them um, and they're designed to um, kind of reduce that flow. I mean, that's the flared end section is um, designed to slow down, slow down that velocity exiting the basin, um, as, well, as well as the whipwrap. Um, sometimes when you have a large site, you know, sometimes we do these large industrial warehouses and you have a very much, much larger system, then you may have like a level spreader that's maybe like 50 feet wide so that it spreads to water. Uh, but in this case, we have just a quite narrow roadway in a pretty small system, uh, which is flared end section with whip weapons is more than sufficient. Again, this was uh, reviewed by the DPW. Sure. Yeah, I will mention now that Janet hasn't had a chance to look at the stormwater calculations. So she's asking actually for this to be continued until she has a chance to uh, look at it herself. Um, so she may have additional things to say about uh, the plan. Has the DPW agreed to maintain that facility? No, this is a private roadway and private property. Okay, so who would be who would be tasked with maintaining that structure, cleaning it the, out, or the the Heather Lane um, has a the association with all the lots um, needs to maintain the the road. Um, this drainage system has an easement, um, so it's maintained by 
by all the owners of the subdivision. So there's a, the, all 10 lots will be part of the homeowners association. Um, and one of the conditions of the planning board's approval was that the conditions of the approval are part of the deed and it addresses the drainage easement and the maintenance of the road and all the associated piping, et cetera. So it will be on every deed that it has to be maintained by the homeowners association. Have you had some questions about permits too? Um, is, did the um, planning board uh, approve this in total or there's still some things lingering? It's been approved in total and we are in the appeal period. Um, they approved it, was it the 11th, Brandon? I, I can't remember the exact date, but there was some follow-up paperwork. So yes, the planning board has, has approved it in its entirety. Okay, so there isn't some part that was removed or something recently. Um, I was talking to Lee at the planning board and I thought there was some portion of of this that was um, taken out or something. Is that not? We, no, I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Deb. Uh, we had to submit a landscape plan for the cul-de-sac at the end of Heather Lane and then add street lighting um, to Heather Lane extension, which is the residential compound. But other than that, there were no revisions. Okay. Yeah. There was a small revision where the lot one's a corner lot. So we uh, had a strip that was a uh, unbuildable lot. Yeah, I remember that. This was something different because she just told me about it like two days ago. But I didn't write down what it was, so. Um, um, we've been in touch with her in the last couple of days. Um, we submitted all the homeowners association paperwork and whatnot, and I, I am unaware of anything. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to ask my questions now? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so we kind of are between town councils. Um, so we need to have the, um, the written conservation restriction reviewed by them um, before you can record that. So we're working on that. I think um, Bob Smart asked Lee if, if the new town council has been officially appointed. So I know that Bob and Lee have been communicating about that. Yes, I know. Um, but we, I guess it's on us to send it over to them to review. Okay. I'm not planning. So we'll, we'll get that taken care of. Um, we haven't talked about, is there any vegetation removal proposed within our jurisdiction or buffer zone for this? Yes, um, there'll be 12 uh, healthy trees removed within the 100 foot buffer zone. Okay, so you know that we have a two to one tree replacement policy? Mm -hmm. um, we can, uh, Propose you uh, plant 24 uh, trees within the buffer zone. Um, All right. Well, I think since we're not going to close tonight, the commission's probably going to want more information on that. Um, the types and sizes of trees to be removed would be good to see on, on the plan and um, the species that you're planning to plant and where those are going to go. We were. Um, going to plant um, 24 red maple trees. Um, the policy requires them to be a minimum of one and a half inches. Um, and as far as understory, are you removing any, any shrubs, ground cover? There, there really isn't any understory in the area where the trees need to be re removed. They're mature pine trees and there's quite a bit of distance between each one of the trees. There's a little bit of poison ivy, but. Okay. So I think you'll probably need to submit something on that. Um, we can include that in the report. Excuse me, Deb, excuse me, Deb, for a second. You're saying within the 100 foot, is it within, are they within trees within the 50 foot? No. No, because um, the. So they're all between 50 and, 50 and 100. 
you see here um, the existing edge of payment is generally around here. Um, and where the proposed payment is, is this dark black line. Uh, we're expanding the payment by approximately five feet. So the, the work is really just five foot of additional payment and the new wall, um, all of it is outside of 50 foot buffer. It's just a um, few trees are kind of along the existing driveway. Got it. Thank you. Okay. And also, I was just looking at the um, abutters list. Um, so it doesn't have the usual um, signature. Um, it doesn't have a date on it. So I'm just wondering how, how long ago you got this abutters list? That was... Um, the photos list we received from um, for the planning board filing, um, and we've uh, requested if they need to be updated. Uh, I think I sent, sent you an email and uh, stated everything was fine. From Needham, because I saw that from um, Westwood. Yep, we reached out to all the uh, towns that um, Westwood, um, as well as okay because the the list has some names circled some crossed out and so it's just a little right. time right i think the, most of the crossed out were when they repeated um they may be listed twice okay and there were previous owners listed as well okay we did get an updated list from Dover, correct, Brandon? Yes, yes. I've reached out to all the towns. Yes. Okay. Um, so as far as the flagging goes, so GLM flagged the isolated wetlands. And then John Rockwood went out and refreshed flags that had been placed about five years ago. Mm-hmm. He refreshed the flags where um, work is adjacent to resource areas. Okay. And there wasn't any change from the last. Correct. From five years ago. Okay. And so it'll be up to the new homeowners um, to come before the commission for each, each separate lot and, and um, deal with the resource areas at that time. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I had. All right. Any other commissioners have? Yeah. Questions? Yeah. Can I have um, just a quick question? Can you just give me a, a brief um, summary of the utilities? I didn't really see them show up on the map. So you're doing uh, wells that are going to be water lines in the street, sewer lines, electrical lines that are going to be buried overhead, uh, things like that. Yep. Uh, there'll be sewer. Um, water, uh, electric lines will, will be buried. Um, so all, all the utilities are underground, um, as well as stormwater. Uh, we have two catch basins here, drain manhole and drainage pipes. Any pump stations for sewers or anything like mm -hmm. that? Nope, all sewers by gravity. All gravity. Uh, just if you install some of that underground, you hit water table. You anticipate hitting water table all we have to dewater to install some of those utilities? We don't anticipate hitting any, any water, the water table. Okay. The electric, a lot of the electrical infrastructure was put in um, early 2000. There was no water encountered at that time. The utilities are uh, pretty shallow. Um, everything is by gravity, the sewer um, ends at, um, ties into the, a sewer easement at elevation 106 on the plan that's in front of you. It doesn't go out to Chestnut Street. Uh, the only utility that goes out to Chestnut Street is the uh, water service, which will be replaced. And um, we recently did some test pits down in the wet basin. And I think would we go down nine and a half, 10 feet, Brandon, and, and mm -hmm. didn't encounter any water. So what, are the so what are the soils like? I'm just curious. Are they sand and gravel? Much. There, yes, sand and gravel in the stormwater basin. Thank you. 
Did you provide us with the um, with the results of the test pits? Yep, they're right on the plan. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is this, uh, are there any other uh, people uh, in attendance at this hearing from the public? Uh, it does look like there is at least one person um, and they've just raised their hand now, it looks like. Okay, so it might be time to call them in. Okay, um, I'm gonna patch the person in who's just listed as SB. Yes, it's Sam. I'm an abutter. I'm the uh, a trustee of the 770 Chestnut Street uh, LLC. Just listening, and I have no comments particular. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so we are going to be continuing this. Um, I assume to the next meeting. I'm, I'm sorry to um, interrupt. Uh, sure. But if if the only um, a standing item are the trees. Um, we would kind of request if that could be placed as a condition that, you know, we plant 24 red maple trees, a minimum one and a half inch caliper uh, within the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, and regarding stormwater management, I mean, fully designed per DEP regulations. It's been submitted to the state, it's been reviewed by engineering department signed off by Mr. Del Gazo. Um, I know the applicant is anxious to get started. Um, so we request if you could place um, those conditions. Yes, I understand. Uh, our, the, the chair, uh, Janet Bernardo, um, usually wants to approve uh, stormwater um, herself, and so she's requested that this not be approved until she has a chance to look over the over the calculations and the plan. Um, so what, that's one of the factors leading to the um, the continuance. Um, and if we could also get some backup information as far as the the um, isolated wetland about its potential as a vernal pool, um, if you can get that from GLM would be helpful. And, and I will say we prefer uh, not to just condition um, the plantings um, because it often leads to oversights like the one we saw earlier this evening. So if, if, if you can have a plan that actually specifies this trees being removed, the species caliper, and then the um, I guess we know the species being planted, uh, but exactly where they're, they're being planted um, on a plan, um, I think that's what we're looking for. Okay. All right. Commissioners? Um, so, if this was continued, I guess there's no um, time anymore. Um, can I have a motion? Motion to continue to uh, September 24th. Is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Second. All right, I'll go down the list. Artie? Aye. Bill? Aye. Steve? Aye. Peter? Aye. All right, so this will be continued to September 24th um, with the things, uh, particularly the, the, the planting plan and additional information about um, the isolated wetland. And those are, we need to receive those by next Thursday for additional information. So just to recap, it's the information uh, from GLM regarding the isolated wetland, the vernal pool, the uh, trees to be taken down, size, caliper, species, and then a uh, planting plan uh, for the replacement of those trees. Thank you. And 
will Janet, uh, and I know you may not be able to speak for her, um, is is it likely that she'll be able to review the stormwater management? Yeah, yeah, okay. she will. And, and any comments maybe that she has can go to Tony. I don't know who has the final say um, where Tony has already signed up on it. If Janet, mm -hmm. just so we can uh -huh. maybe beforehand. Yes, I will. I'm actually going to see her tomorrow morning. So okay. I'll I'll ask if she can maybe review them over the weekend and if she has any comments or revisions that we give you time. Okay. Okay. Whatever she comes up with, I guess we'll have to run by Tony. And again, I'm, I'm not sure who, who has the final say in Trump that. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we I don't, don't want to go there. We don't want to in the middle of that, but. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if we, if we can get that information in a timely manner as possible, I'd appreciate it so we can get everything addressed. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll see you on the 24th. All right. Good night. Good night. All right. So um, that's our business, I guess. Is there anything else? I don't think so. Um, so, Peter, I'm going to see you in the morning. Yeah. So just to give you a heads up, um, Eversource sent a crew down to Charles River Peninsula and did a certain amount of damage um, from my perspective anyway. And so we're gonna meet with the representative down there uh, tomorrow to get some clarity about what they did and why they did it the way they did it. Right, so Janet, Peter, myself, and, um, and Eddie Olson are going to meet down there with representatives um, just to, to go over the situation. So I'll see you tomorrow morning. Um, and Clay, if you can send me what you want Janet to sign for the scout, um, email it to me. I'll print it out and give it to her to sign in the morning. And then, are you coming? I'm sorry. Um, I wasn't planning on being there tomorrow. My, okay. my still pretty sore. Yeah, I, I, I imagine. But I, I thought you said something about seeing the scout guy tomorrow. So I was like, oh, maybe he is coming. But if he wants to meet me, um, I'm assuming I'll be back at the office by like 10, 1030. And I'll be there for a little while. So if he wants to come pick up what he needs for Saturday or whatever, um, let him know. Otherwise, he's going to probably have to wait till Monday. <laughs> so um, just send me what you want to sign. I'll send that tonight before, uh, before anything else. Okay, great. And some coming out of this meeting, there's only one thing that's the Keolis that we need to sign. Um, so country way, no. So yeah, that's it. All right. All right. So I'll let you know when those are available. That is available. Thank you, everyone. Uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. I motion we adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Who seconded it before it was even voted? <laughs> Second. Second. Art, Artie? Aye. Steve? Aye. Bill? Aye. Peter? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. There we go. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thank you. Good job, Peter. <laughs>